Welcome to the Gonza Index how to play video. Let's jump straight in. The aim of Gonza Index is to have the highest credit total at the end of the game. Let's overview setup. First, shuffle the corporation cards and place the top six corporation cards individually face up in a communal area. Each will need a value marker placed onto the white starting space. Place the remaining cards face down in a deck nearby. Next, each player chooses a colour. Give each player a reference card and place the credit tokens of each player's colour into a general supply. Then shuffle the event cards and put the top four into a face down deck for play in this game, with the rest being placed back in the box. Take the event track and three event tokens and place these near the event deck. Four event cards is the recommended amount, but if you'd like a longer game, simply add more event cards, and for shorter games, take them away. We don't recommend playing with less than three or more than six event cards. The broker card deck is then shuffled, and the top four cards are laid face up in the communal area, with the remaining broker cards face down in a deck. The player who goes first is the one who has most recently earned some money, or choose randomly. Play will happen in turns, moving clockwise from the first player. Once the first player has been decided, that player takes one credit into their personal supply, and all other players take two credits. All of your credits start in the general supply, but as you earn them, they move to your personal supply for you to spend either investing in corporations or buying cards from brokers. And remember, you may only ever take credits of your own colour. Let's now learn about gameplay. On your turn, you simply roll the five communal dice, all of which are the same, except one has two event actions. This die is a different colour to the rest and is known as the event die. You may re-roll any or all of the dice up to a maximum of two times, with the exception of the event die. The event action is only available on this die. If you roll the event action on this die, it is fixed and cannot be re-rolled. Once you are satisfied with the actions rolled and or you have re-rolled the dice up to two times, you begin performing the actions indicated by the dice. You may perform the actions in any order you wish. You don't have to take the action on a die either, it's up to you. If you don't take the corresponding action, it's just ignored. There are six actions available on the dice, each represented by an icon. So let's take a look at each one. Earn one credit. Take one credit from the general supply and add it to your personal supply. Place a stock. Take one credit from your personal supply and place it on any corporation. This credit is now worth the equivalent amount as indicated by the value marker on that corporation card. If you don't have any credits in your personal supply, then you cannot perform this action. Bear in mind that there is a maximum number of credits permitted on each corporation card from all players, which is based on player count. Increase a stock by one. You may move the value marker of a stock on any corporation up by one space. Decrease a stock by one. You may move the value marker of a stock on any corporation down by one space. Bid on a broker card. A credit can be put onto any of the four face-up broker cards in order to place a bid. When bids are counted in a broker card auction, the player who has the most bids on a card adds it to their hand. We'll discuss these auctions in more detail later in this video. You may only place one credit per bid symbol rolled. Event. The event action involves taking a yellow event token and placing it onto an available space on the event track. If the event icon is rolled, unlike the other actions in this game, you must take that action. Meaning at some point during your turn, you need to add one of the event tokens to the track. This means that if an event icon is rolled on the event die, then you cannot re-roll that die. Players performing the event action can decide when in their turn the event action is taken. For example, they can perform one action, then the event action, then perform the rest of their actions. When the third of these event tokens is added to the event track, an event is immediately initiated, followed by a broker auction, which I'll talk about in more detail very soon. 
When an event is initiated, the top card of the event deck is flipped and the instructions on the event card are activated and this card is then discarded. If there are no more cards in the event deck to reveal, then this is the trigger for the end of the game. Event cards will affect different types of corporations. There are four different types of corporations in the game. Financial, tech, service and resource-based corporations. The type of the corporation is indicated by the symbol in the top right corner of the corporation card. Events will make specific types of corporations move their value markers up or down. Let's now dive into more detail on the broker card auction. After every event card is activated, a broker auction is immediately initiated. When this happens, the bids on the face-up broker cards are counted and the player with the most credits on each card adds that card to their hand. The winning bidder pays their bid to the general supply and all other lower bidders receive their money back to their personal supplies. In the case of a tie, the player who activated the current auction, this means the player whose role placed the third event token on the event track, breaks the tie. If equal bids are on a card and neither player was the one to activate the event, then the card is discarded and all bidding players have their bids returned to their personal supply. At the end of the auction, all four face-up broker cards are discarded to the bottom of the deck and four new cards are revealed. Players cannot ever have more than two broker cards in their hand at the end of their turn. If a player ever has more than two broker cards, they may keep and use them until the end of their next turn, or current turn if they are the active player, but must then discard back down to two. Now let's look at how to play any broker cards you've bought. Broker cards can be played at any point during your turn. After a broker card is played, that card is discarded to the bottom of the broker deck. The effects of the broker cards are described on the cards themselves. Be aware that some broker cards have end game effects and so cannot be played until the end of the game. Others can only be played in specific circumstances, for example just as an event is about to start. These exceptions are written on the cards themselves. For example, the Trader Insurance card cannot be played until the end of the game, but if you have it in your hand at the end of the game, then you can ignore all the losses you made from one corporation when calculating your final credit score. Now, what happens at the end of the game? The end of the game is initiated when all event cards have been activated. When this happens, there is one final round played and then the final scores are calculated. The player who initiates the last auction does so on their final turn of the game using all five dice. Every other player then gets one final turn, however they have increasingly limited dice to work with. How many dice each subsequent player uses depends on player count. For example, in a five player game, the next player after the one who initiated the last event uses four dice. The following player uses three dice, the next player uses two dice, and the final, you guessed it, therefore only uses one die. After the final turn, the game is scored. Players can gain credits from the following. Each credit in your personal supply is worth one credit. Each of your credits placed on a corporation is worth credits equal to the current value marker location of the corporation it's based on. Any broker cards which give you endgame credits are also counted. Once all of the credits have been counted, the player with the highest amount is declared the winner. In the case of a tie, then of the tied players, the player who used the least dice in the final round is declared the winner. Let's run through a quick example. At the end of the game, Caro has one credit in her personal supply and two credits on the Hensler Corporation card. The value marker for this corporation is at two. She also has the Inheritance Broker card granting her five extra credits. This means Caro has a total value of 10 credits at the end of the game. This is a very low score and Caro should be very disappointed in herself. You now know everything you need to play Gonza Index. If you have any questions, then please don't hesitate to get in touch with us in the comments section below. Enjoy. Bye.